I just wanted to take a video of my progress that I've made on my all pass filter phase linear linearization program. I've been telling myself that I wanted to document more of my progress on things. Anyways, so so just uh, I guess I'll the the premise of the program is is that IIR digital filters have nonlinear phase. So how do you use all pass filters to to normalize or to like to get even group delay across the pass band? Okay, so I've read a few um, academic articles and they're pretty hard to read. And some of them some of them mentioned using a genetic algorithm to to figure it out and I tried that. Well, like I just tried making my own and it wasn't too successful. I know MATLAB has its own toolkit on how to, it probably, I don't know if it does because I don't have MATLAB, but it probably does have a toolkit on how to place second order all pass filters such that the, the group delay is linearized. Um, so I, I just wanted to make my own tool and because it was, I don't know, I get into these things. Okay, so, on the left is the magnitude response and this this axis shows the group delay and it the group delay is the one with these these markers on it like the the peaks and valleys and then the red is the is the 6 db uh pass band like 6 db below the peak okay um and so right here is the over here is the error function and so the the error function right so the whole the whole idea of this program is to try to optimize the group delay and so i actually coded a gradient optimizer so before there was just you could just uh you, there were sliders down here and you could uh move the all pass filter the center frequency and so over here, you can see this this chart going crazy. It's just it just shows the history of the error, and the error is the the sum of all of this of of this graph. It's just the average. And so before there was just it was purely manual, but now I've gotten it to be kind of uh, this optimizer. But it's you still need uh, human intervention in it. Okay, so. Uh, I guess I'll move on, and and so uh, there's no particular order in which I'm mentioning things, but this is the error function, and so I had this was the best error function that it come up could come up with, um, and so the whole idea of the error function is to characterize uh, group delay flatness. You need a way to create a metric on how to represent uh, the amount of ripple that is happening here, and so ultimately. The best one that I figured out, and I haven't thought too hard about it, but the most successful one is you take the max peak and then you subtract the group delay in the passband. So like all, basically the frequency is denoted by the red, like within the red magnitude, you apply the same frequency band to the group delay. And then you sum up the difference between the max group delay and all the rest. And that's what you have here. So that's why there's a zero over here because the max group delay is over here. Okay, um, and then again, that's the history. So every time I change something, it'll it'll increment the counter and then it'll loop back to zero. Okay, so in the begin, it's already added an all pass filter. So the program automatically adds an all pass filter. And so when you add an all pass filter, it does a global search of of the frequency and radius space. So there's two variables that you can adjust in the all-pass filter, and that's the frequency, which is the x-axis, and then you can adjust the radius, uh, one of the, which is like one of the poles. Uh, it's one of the poles of the all-pass filters, radius from the origin in the z domain. Okay, so when I add an all-pass filter, it's going to just scan, it's gonna do a two-dimensional search from the start the the low the low frequency to the upper frequency of the pass band 
uh, and for each frequency, it it sweeps the radius from like 0.7 to 0.99, and holds on to the the best one that it sees, and then after that, it's going to do a gradient optimization. So the frequency, the the center frequency is six six uh, kilohertz, and then the bandwidth is here. So I, I guess I'll just, uh, yeah, so why don't we just add another section and see what happens. So so it already, so it figures out where that best all-pass filter should be, and then it does a gradient optimization. And so the green, so, so the, if you can see here, so these are all-pass filter sections indicated by the brackets. And so the red means that it hasn't, fully converged meaning that the the that the it hasn't found the using the error function it hasn't found the the bottom of the hill so to speak if you don't know about gradient optimization then i don't know this i'm not gonna explain it right here but the red just means it hasn't the the slope of the error function that it's at is not uh zero or below zero the the threshold is actually like point 0 0.075 okay okay so then it got everything and so rescale and so it did something and then you can add another one yeah I, I like the red and the green it's really visual it's great and so now it's just it's just optimizing the the frequency so this this means angle uh, and that's the angle of 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 the pole the all pass filters pole i mean there's two poles in a second order all pass filter there's the upper and there's just conjugate and so this represents the upper uh in degrees uh where 180 degrees represents the nyquist frequency Okay, so we're waiting on one pole. And so I'll just, I'll just, I'll, this is the last one I do because it does take a while. And it's pretty slow because I think it's in Python. Everything's in Python, so that's why it's so slow. And so, okay, so it just finished. Anyways, yeah, that doesn't look so great. Um, let's figure out where that one went. So sometimes if it d didn't work so well, then you have to manually intervene because the, the gradient is only good for finding the local minimum. And so it might be the best for where it was, but you'll get another solution if you move it. And so there's, you provide human intervention, then you'll put it in another place where it can find the, the minimum. So, oops. do that, reduce the radius. And then I'll do the other one. Nope, 50 degrees. And then if I hit the, and I'll hit the, the optimizer. And so basically it just, it's hard to describe, I guess, over, yeah, I, I'm not gonna describe it. I was thinking about describing how it does the optimization. Okay, so, so that's it, and then and then you can save it to a log file. And so right there, cat output. So the the one that we just worked on was six kilohertz bandwidth of three hundred three kilohertz. And so then these are all the all pass filter stages. So one, so magnitude radius, magnitude radius, magnitude radius. Get rid of that. And so today I just. 
went through uh, the audio frequency and I did one for each set, like three, four, five kilohertz. Yeah. Okay.